right. Uh, I want to now refresh your carbonate um, chemistry um, knowledge and how he introduced this. And a couple of the slides that I'll present are ones that Howie had, and uh, others are just different formulations of the same thing. So we remember um, that we can write equilibrium. We can write chemical reactions. CO2 plus H2O is dissolved carbonate, and that's an equilibrium constant. Okay, and in this case, equilibrium constant K0 is the concentration of dissolved carbonic, undissociated carbonic acid, divided by the activity of water, times uh, divided by the activity of or the PCO2, the partial pressure of, of carbon dioxide. Now, these are all in uh, activities, which is the thermodynamic concentration, which is like the real concentration, only a little bit different that you need to correct for. And if you take a class in geochemistry, you'll say, oh, yeah, I remember that. We, we covered that in freshman chemistry. But if you're taking it in freshman chemistry, you say, oh, I remember that. We covered that in high school chemistry. <laughs> <clears throat> or perhaps in kindergarten, even. Um, but it is there, even if you've tried to scrub it from your brain. Okay? So these brackets mean activities, which is almost concentration, but it's corrected for things like the salinity of the water and so on. So not so much important. But we have these equilibrium constants. And, and is an equilibrium constant constant under certain conditions? Yes. And under constant temperature? So these are for 25 degrees. And it's an equilibrium constant because it's a constant. And so we can use all of these things. And the important thing here is that if we know the, the equilibrium constant, we know PCO2. PCO2 for the present atmosphere is 400 ppm. OK, in log space, that is 10 to the minus. 10 to the 0 is a million ppm. 10 to the minus 1 is 100,000 ppm. 10 to the minus 2 is 10,000 ppm. 10 to the minus 3 is 1,000 ppm. 10 to the minus 4 is 100 ppm. So we're about, we're in between 10 to the minus 3 and 10 to the minus 4. And it turns out we're about close enough 10 to the minus 3.5. Okay? So this is 10 to the minus 3.5. This is 10 to the minus 1.5. This is 1 because it's pure water. So we know the equilibrium concentration of this in equilibrium with the atmosphere. Okay? It's 10 to the minus 5 because this is 10 to the minus. So we bring this over here, 10 to the minus 3.5 times 10 to the minus 1.5. This is 1, so it doesn't do anything. So that's 10 to the minus 5. Okay? So then, with, solved with that, we could go through and for the, the classic case that, that you'll have to do someday if you ever take a geochemistry class, we'll say, what are the distribution of species in rainwater? Rainwater is pure water falling through the atmosphere with a pressure of 10 to the minus um, um, 3.5. And you can solve all of these things, including this little baby for hydrogen ion. And you'll actually discover that the uh, equilibrium value uh, for rainwater gives you a pH of, somebody tell me what the pH of rainwater in equilibrium with the atmosphere is. 10, yeah, 5.6, okay? And you'll solve, so you can solve all of these. I just give you those boundary conditions. Solve for everything using those equations and the assuming 10 to the minus 3.5 PCO2, which is the atmosphere, you can solve all of those. Wonderful. You can make it a little bit diff more difficult. You can say, well, this is, lime <coughs> this is water that's falling on a limestone, like in a cemetery. And it's sitting on that little pool of water on top of the limestone. And now we've thrown in a new problem here, a new chemical reactant, and we can say, OK, now solve it. Okay? OK, that turns out to have a pH 
of 10 to the minus 8, I mean, uh, of 8.3, okay? So carbonate in equilibrium with the atmosphere is, gives a pH of 10 to the minus, uh, of 8.3. And we could do this for, well, what is soil CO2? What's, okay, if atmosphere is 10 to the minus 3.5, Soil CO2 is 10 to the minus 2.5. Okay, that's 10 times higher, 10 to the minus 2.5, maybe even a little higher, but yeah, 10 to the minus 2.5 would be a one to start with. So we could calculate the pH of that. And the pH of that is a little bit lower, okay, but not much. It's about 10 to the minus, it gives a pH about 10 to the, uh, about pH of about seven and a half, okay. If we have carbonate in equilibrium with soil CO2 anywhere in the world. If there's carbonate in the system and it comes to equilibrium, our pH is buffered between 7 and 8.3 all over this planet, okay? So I live in the western U.S. Uh, and virtually every soil this side of the Mississippi River has soil carbonate in it. So all of these soils are well, well buffered. They're well buffered system, we don't get Acidic soils. As we get to the east coast of the U.S., higher rainfall, we actually flush everything through the system. We don't have carbonates in the soil <coughs> unless there's bedrock limestone around. And so those soils uh, can get more acidic. All right. We'll move on a little bit now. Uh, we did this. Oh. The other, one of the, here, here's the first association constant for carbonic acid. H2CO3 is H plus plus HCO3. That's this reaction. And it gives a K1 of 10 to the minus 6.5. And again, you probably forgot from, from somewhere in your previous life, but just, you know, just inspection of that equation tells you something really, really important. And so if, when is this, at what pH is this equal to that? Six and a half, right, 6.35, okay? So that tells you the crossover from when one becomes more dominant than the other. And that is a really, really important piece of information. And you saw this in, in Howie's lecture um, already. Uh, we, here's the, the same one for the carbonate system, the second association constant. Oh, the crossover is 10.3. So that means at pH is above 10.3, there's more of that than that. At pH is below 10.3, there's more of that than that. And that's how much. So this, I think, how he presented you with this, with this classic figure. So there's our crossovers, 6.3 and 10.3. And here's our, so this is pH and relative concentrations. And so what basically between six and a half and 8.3, here we are, six, six and a half to 8.3, if we've got carbonate in the system, then we're dominated by this, by, by the HCO3 ion, okay? Way up here, dominated by that. Way over here, actually the dominant species is carbonic acid. So here's where pH is, and so again, as a reminder, when we talk about acid rain, it's only acid if it's more acid than this. This is normal rain, not acid rain, even though this, this is the, everything on this side is acidic, but natural rain is a little bit acidic. Okay, so, uh, so calcite is an incredibly important mineral, and you've already seen how Howie has decided to use it in looking at, at the history of, uh, of, of life on Earth. Um, so here's a, again, a chemical reaction, calcium carbonate, what we want, plus CO2, plus water, gives us calcium ion, plus two bicarbonate species, okay? We've already kind of discussed this. PCO2 of the atmosphere is 10 to the minus 3.5. In soil, it's 10 to 100 times higher. So, degassing causes carbonate calcite precipitation. Why?
Why does degassing cause carbonate precipitation? Yeah. Le Chatelier's right. Le Chatelier's principle says, okay, if you increase something on one side or decrease something on the other on the one side, it'll push the reaction appropriately. So if we take away CO2, we're going to push things this way. So degassing is an incredibly important thing. So if you've got high PCO2 and we could have been with carbonate, and we go to a low CO2 environment, okay, then we, we degas, we can precipitate carbonate. We, if we increase the concentrations of either of these, then we can cause car carbonate precipitation. Okay? And how do we do that? Actually, one of the ways we can do that is related to root processes in plants. Plants selectively leave behind calcium and bicarbonate in the solution. So they actually will, the water that they take up is depleted a little bit in calcium and bicarbonate. And so the transpiration process of plants uh, actually ca can change the chemistry of the soil solution in a way that would favor that. And just water loss, just pure evaporation. So that's actually this process as well, how either it's evaporative loss or due to plant Relationship. So we've got several mechanisms to precipitate carbonates. And <clears throat> so this is just a bunch of important stuff uh, that's kind of summarized for you to look at and might be very useful for group two. <clears throat> uh, so we can actually see what the equilibrium pH is for soil solution and equilibrium with uh, uh, carbonate. So that's just the solution to Here's the, all of those equations lumped together gives you the activity of calcium or the activity of hydrogen ion to the third power with all the equilibrium constants and PCO2 is our variable, which is to the second power. And that's that line right there. Okay, so that's our equilibrium pH as a function of PCO2 in equilibrium with calcite. Okay. Some other key things, so if we, we, we can solve this for the concentration of calcium in solution, and so we can see here's soil CO2, here's log PCO2, calcium concentration, and so again, we can combine those equations together and calculate this curve. So if soils were here, and atmosphere is here. So if we're at 10 to the minus 1, then the equilibrium concentration of calcium is about 3 millimoles per kilogram of water. And we see the, equal, the, the at, at, at 10 to the minus 3.5, it's, it's about 0 0.5. So that means that not a little bit of calcium has to come out of solution. Most of the, cal most of the carbonate comes out of solution. Okay? So the calcium that was in there, 80% will come out as carbonate, okay? Um, I made coffee this morning, and to do that, I boiled some water. And the water I put in was probably about here, okay? So I boiled that water, and what did that do to PCO2 in my teapot. What did it actually bring it to? By boiling the water. 10 to the what? Negative a lot, right. It's not, it, it, we completely got rid of all of the CO2. So we should actually precipitate all of the calcium carbonate. By boiling water continually in your teapot, what happens, you build up, certainly in Salt Lake City, you build up one heck of a lot of calcite quickly, okay? So, and other places it happens in your house. Has anybody ever had a leaky faucet? Okay, and why is it? It's because you're putting, when you open the faucet, there's a huge PCO2 drop across that faucet, okay? And then you have to call your landlord and say, come fix this faucet, and you take it, the faucet apart, and you see, oh, there's a bunch of calcium carbonate all over the valve, okay? <clears throat> so, another minor feature that's really interesting about, about carbonate is it's one of the few minerals on Earth 
that has what we call retrograde solubility. That means it's less soluble at uh, high temperatures than at cold temperatures. Okay, almost all minerals are more soluble at high temperatures than cold temperatures, but not calcite. Okay, and that's because it is a carbonate mineral and it actually has to do with the solubility of CO2 in water. Okay, gases are more soluble in cold water than hot water. And as a result, calcite has this unique property, or this not unique, because other carbonate minerals do it. In fact, all the carbonate minerals do it. Uh, but silicate minerals, that's not the case. And most salts, much more soluble in hot water than in cold water. So it's another, another effect. Um, OK, then now we're just about to the isotopes. So it begins to get a bit complicated because we have these equilibrium fractionation factors between, here's uh, uh, carbon dioxide, here's aqueous dissolved CO2, here's the carbonate species, here's the bicarbonate species, and then uh, this is if we sum off how much all of, these, uh, all of these things are, and this is done for the ocean, from the ocean surface, okay? <clears throat> Oh wait, this is, excuse me, this is not the isotope fractionation factors, this is the, the amount uh, relative to the atmospheric concentration. What I need to get to are the isotope fractionation factors, which are on here. Okay, so we need to know the isotope fractionation factor between CO2 gas, CO2 aqueous, between CO2 gas and carbonate, between CO2 gas and car so, so bicarbonate and carbonate, and then also calcite. So this is just a little diagram that shows if we have some uh, total DIC, dissolved inorganic carbon, <clears throat> all of it in equilibrium with CO2 of minus 23 per mil. Okay. Well, the equilibrium fractionation factor between CO2 and calcite is about, uh, about 13 per mil. Okay, this is for, I forget what temperature. Um, but if we look at the pH across this, uh, going from pH 4 to pH 12, we'll see that we go from being dominated by carbonic acid to dominated by HCO3 to dominated by CO3. And those have different isotope values. And so DIC, dissolved inorganic carbon, is some of this, the carbonic acid. Some of it is HCO3, which has a very, it, it's 10 or 11 per mil different. And some of it's the CO3 molecule. So we need to know the, we need to be able to, to, to proportionate the species of dissolved CO2. And so if we're actually doing DIC, we actually need to know what the pH is. Fortunately, we can, you know, it turns out that if you forgot, usually you can actually guess it reasonably well. At least you can say, well, I know it's between six and a half, seven and a half, because all waters in the western U.S. are between six and a half and seven and a half. <clears throat> so you'll, you'll be, unfortunately, in this really, you, you might be in this really, if you get down below seven, you could be in this really tricky window where, where it's really sensitive. <clears throat> so to actually solve the whole system, you need to, you need to be able to proportionate, and so you need to know the pH to figure out how much is, how much is CO, uh, bicarbonic acid, how much is the bicarbonate, how much is the CO. So we've done that, and, and, and I hope you've got a little more insight now into the complexities of the carbonate system. And I, I do tell my, my geochemistry class, if you can do the carbonate system and understand equilibrium carbonate calculations, you can do any mineral, okay? And, and, and we've gone through it, so it's not, it's not that big a deal. It's just like five equations.